a week after we probably saw the most improbable comeback, we saw another comeback that was even more improbable. And I'm only going to talk about Brock Purdy in this video. I'm not going to talk about all the plays, but just the plays like this. The plays where he made with his legs, whether it was, you know, being the blitz, whether it was scrambling, whether it was buying more time, it's pretty evident that when the 49ers needed a quarterback to make a play, for the first time in maybe two decades, they had one. So only talking about Brock Purdy and his legs in this video. So let's get right to it. All right, so Kyle Shannon is widely recognized as the best offensive mind in the game, and that's as close to objective as it gets, right? Nobody would really dispute that. There are plays throughout the game where he's going to dial up something, and the defense knows what's coming. Think about it. Think about how many plays the 49ers, or sorry, how many games the 49ers have played this season, how many times they've run these little boot actions where Debo comes and holds the underneath defender like we've called out all year, and then there's one deep over route crossing they're hoping to get the misdirection with christian mccaffrey he's out of position he does what kyle shannon expects him to do takes it underneath but the safety does a really good job here of nailing down on brandon Ayuk. and now the like he's covered right there's nowhere to go you need a quarterback who can create out of structure you need a quarterback who can do something for shannon when there are those handful five six seven eight nine maybe even ten plays a game with 49ers just don't have an answer and here he does so he buys time with his legs as you can see he's rolling left looking downfield nothing there nothing there Kyle Yushek, who's the intended target here does a good job of just finding space right run to where they aren't Purdy keeps his eyes downfield and instead of panicking instead of throwing the ball away explosive play 49ers first down and this is how they end up getting their first points of the game i think this just tells you this just goes against basically every narrative and i think this whole game was where you know he's just not a game manager that's not who he is if a game manager has a situation like this he's throwing the ball away right or he's throwing it underneath to somebody who's even not covered or sorry who's not open and it's a like debo right there the ball's going to debo if he's a game manager like that's just not who purdy is he does not like the idea of throwing that check down Purdy was forced to beat the blitz a couple times and not just beat the blitz. They're unblocked rushers. So here's an example. George Kittle is going to come in motion. The corner right here, you have the linebacker. He's head up on McCaffrey. If you're the quarterback, you know, if he comes at me, I have a wide open receiver. Watch how Brock Purdy processes this. He understands that he's looking at Debo. He's reading the slant. The Lions, again, they do a good job of taking that first level threat away because when you blitz, you're going to take the first level away. Hope that, you know, you're the force the quarterback into making a mistake, holding the ball. Instead, Purdy recognizes that, acknowledges it, gives the ball to Christian McCaffrey, Offensive Player of the Year, underneath, one-on-one. -on -one. Before anything else happens, this is a successful play. It's not a sexy play, right? But in the coach's room, this is how you win as a quarterback. You have to be able to beat the blitz. It doesn't always have to be flashy. He does. And then Christian McCaffrey does what Christian McCaffrey normally does. Stiff arm, makes the guy miss. And you end up getting a chunk play just because your quarterback knows how to beat the blitz. This is third and 10, and Shannon has a perfect play call on. So what they're going to do is they're going to run a snag concept. Juwan Jennings is going to run up short of the sticks and try to occupy the underneath defender. Debo Samuel is the point in the trips. He's going to run off. Brent Ayuk is going to run the sail route, so he's going to come up and run the deep out. Watch how it plays out. Like The route combination is beautiful, works to perfection. Juwan Jennings holds the safety. Debo runs off the corner, and you have Brandon Ayuk wide open. Obviously, the pass protection does not hold up, and that was a theme um, when Brock Purdy had to drop back. So here we go. Lions blitz, opposite color flashes. So now the route's dead, right? Because he's flushed to his left, and all the routes are to the right. Instead of panicking, right, he does a good job, as always, of keeping his eyes down the field, gives an opportunity to make a play. Is this throw to George Kittle? Maybe. But Brandon Ayuk... Maybe he sees Brandon Ayuk at the very last minute. So from this angle, it's a drop. So it's th keep in mind again, third and ten, five minutes left. If the 49ers convert this, they're scoring points, right? They have the ball at midfield. Could be talking about a different ball game here. But he, Purdy, once again, makes plays with his legs, avoids sacks. He did this numerous times in this game, and, and that was very telling. Obviously, you know, you, you want Ayuk to catch that ball. He knows he has to catch that ball. But it's Purdy making plays again. Doesn't show up on the scoreboard. This play is not going to get talked about. They're going to talk about 
Ayuk being lucky on the 51 yard catch when in, in realistically, you know, the ball evens out no matter what turnovers, um, luck, the way the ball bounces. And they just didn't have it on this one. But once again, pretty making plays with his legs. All right. So we're in the third quarter, NFC championship game. It's third and 10. You just lost three yards, two yards, one yard. It was a negative play uh, for Debo Samuel. And I mean, if you don't convert this, you just put a lot of pressure to convert on fourth down. You risk giving Detroit a short field. If you don't, who Shanahan might punt it. Who knows what happens? Empty, because that's what they do. You know, when they really need to play, they spread you out. And here's how the play plays itself out. So at the bottom of the screen, you have Juwan Jennings, Rory McLeod, and George Kittle. So you have all three of those players running one, two, three, slant, 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 assuming that Detroit's going to run man, so there should be a window to throw. Purdy goes to the right side instead. Ayuk, McCaffrey, not going to blame him for that, but they're covered. There's nowhere to go, and by the time he gets back to this read, it's just too late. He's already pulling the ball down, doesn't like what he sees. You have the opposite color flashing. I imagine that's why, but again, he's keeping his eyes down the field. He's not looking. When he, One of the best traits about Purdy is when he looks to run when he's scrambling he's not looking to run like he's trying to make throws down the field in this instance he's not throwing down the field he's throwing across his body this is as sandlot i mean please please find me a quarterback who's going to make this play please find me a quarterback who is a game manager that even thinks about making this play this is a sack this is an incomplete pass this is not that i can promise you that so I mean, this is one of the bigger plays of the game. After the game, Juwan Jennings said it was his biggest catch of his life. And Juwan Jennings caught a Hail Mary in college to win a game. So um, just really impressive right here. But Purdy gives guys a chance. He has receivers who can make one-on-one plays and win those one-on-one plays. This is a fantastic catch. It's It's a really great throw, honestly, all things considered. It's over the linebacker. He doesn't have a chance. There's nobody else around him. Tough catch, difficult catch, and Jennings makes it. But, again, playmaker, not a game manager. And recklessness, honestly, let's call it what it is. Like, he does not play with caution, which is another reason why I don't understand, like, the game manager, where that label came from. But 49ers live to fight another down. They pick up the first down, and they would go on to score some points. Okay, the 49ers just recovered a fumble, 24-17, have a prime opportunity to tie this game up. They lost a yard on first down, and that was honestly one of a, a pretty big issue in this game. They, they had a lot of plays. I think they had eight-plus plays where they just didn't gain more than at least two yards on first down in this game. So it's second and 11, and this is what happens. So if we're watching the top of the screen. The plan is for Debo Samuel to run a quick slant, and he needs to cross the DB's face cleanly. That doesn't happen clean, and because of that, I mean, there's pressure in his face because that was the theme again. So Purdy just wasn't confident in that throw to Debo, and nobody else was open. Kittle is the second read, I imagine, on the return route coming here. He's covered. So like the Lions again, you have to give them credit for taking the initial play away on a good bit of plays. They did not play a bad game. But, again, you have a quarterback who can scramble. And on this run... 21 yards. So Purdy was the only quarterback in the championship round to be one of Next Gen Stats' fastest ball carries. He reached 17 miles an hour on this carry. I'm not saying he's a speedster, but I think it's pretty evident that he has more of a burst, is a lot more elusive for sure, than defense is given credit for. So on this play, I'm pretty sure the 32 coming into the box there to the right he has an angle, or it seems like he can make this tackle on Purdy. Like right here, this is a DB chasing a quarterback. And he just doesn't gain, like he doesn't make up the ground at all. I thought that was pretty surprising. And that's pretty telling for like maybe Brock is faster than we all thought. Debo, on this play after the game, he said, if I make this block, Purdy scores. Maybe that's an exaggeration, but uh, Purdy's moving. Purdy's chugging <laughs> down the field. That's pretty impressive. So the speed is real, right? The next gen stats, 17 miles an hour, fastest quarterback of the weekend. That is a stat that is not made up. That is pretty impressive. But again, uh, play's not there. 
Purdy make something happen with his legs and not just something, right? It, it's a 21 yard run in the third quarter on third down when you're trailing in the NFC championship game. And this is the effort that you get. You cannot make that up. And that's why players, coaches, and everybody loves him. All right. So four downers first down, the game is tied. They want to take a shot play here. So it's a variation of dagger. Debo's going to run a deep crossing route. Brandon is going to come across the middle. That's where he's looking. He, Purdy is looking for that second window. If we're watching Ayuk right here. There's no body at all. Like This should be an easy throw. But if you look at the backfield, uh, what happens? So last week, the Lions hit the Bucks on this a couple times. On the same exact play, nickel blitz, came unblocked, Baker Mayfield sacked. McCaffrey whiffs in pass protection. He's got to settle down, acknowledge get to his inside shoulder, does not do any of those things. This is a sack, right? This is dead in the water. You punt the ball back because sacks kill drives. And instead, quarterback breaks the tackle, keeps his eyes down the field, finds a wide receiver, fullback, technically, wide open for a first down. I don't, man, if I'm a defensive coordinator, I am ripping my hair out. I had the perfect call on. I got a blitzer on a running back. We won. We had the quarterback wrapped up in the backfield, sack sack but it's not and that's really the competitor right game managers do not do this that is not a thing they are not avoiding sacks and his sack avoidance is an elite skill it is an elite trade and is honestly a big reason why the 49ers are in this position because he has done that what we just saw all season so Purdy picks up the first down here but Shanahan has a perfect call on and honestly like this should be a first down Watch Juwan Jennings to the top of the screen. Like, he's open. He's as wide open as it gets right now. That ball has to come out. Not sure where uh, Purdy's eyes were. Maybe he was just thinking McCaffrey right here, and, like, his eyes never got to the second level. But that's not who he is as a quarterback. So this is, like, the one, you know, hey, let it let it rip, right? Let it fly because he, he's done that all, all year. And his hand's already off the ball. So that tells me, right, he's looking here. Or he's just not comfortable. Maybe he doesn't think his head's around. I'm not sure, but... The 49ers end up settling for a field goal here, and we know when they get inside the 10 especially, they're converting those into touchdowns. But Purdy ends up getting a first down here regardless. The bad news is he took two sacks after this. But it's another sign, right, that even when he's not comfortable or confident making the throw that is that he's reading, he's using his legs. And I really hope, and maybe that's it, right? You, you see the opposite color flashing again. But one, two, three, ball's out, right? Like, Juwan Jennings is open. We saw it right here. I don't know. I, I would love to ask Purdy what he saw there, why he didn't pull the trigger. But they end up getting a first down on the play. All right, so this is a play that you have to come back to against the Chiefs. This is a play that they actually got Fred Warner on a couple times in training camp. Uh, watch it play itself out. So we're watching bottom of the screen here. You have Juwan Jennings running the out. Brandon Ayuk running the deep end breaker. And you get Christian McCaffrey, and I think this is a safety. So the Lions actually, again, yeah, it is a safety. It's uh, Gardner Johnson. The Lions played it really well. You get Christian McCaffrey on the wheel route, where he's just running right up the middle, as you can see. He's technically, he's open, right? Like, he's 4-3 fast. I don't care what he ran. Like, he is fast, fast. And he's open. And I really hope they come back to this. But, dun, dun, dun. Pressure's there. Can't, in these long developing plays, like, you're going to have to pass protect. So, Pretty sees it. He's not even looking right. So again, this is another reason why I think they should come back to it. So it's it's third and four. There's four minutes left in the NFC Championship game. You just don't want to punt it here. Who knows what happens? Um, especially the way the defense gave up the last touchdown. But don't have to worry about that because you got a playmaker under center. This was the best half of football that I've seen Brock Purdy play. And whether it's you know making the throws across his body. He was a like the ultimate competitor. There's no real way to quantify some of these plays. Obviously, this is a great run. So he runs through an arm tackle. And mind you, like he is not a big player for a quarterback standard, right? He breaks an arm tackle from Aiden Hutchinson, who bull rushes the hell out of Colt McKivitz off the right side here. And you saw from the other angle, like right there, a smaller quarterbacks generally go down with arm tackles. Doesn't happen. Now you have a linebacker who has a full head of steam, mind you, right? Like he's one, two, three, three steps in, taking his fourth, and Purdy's just now getting going, and he can't catch him. Purdy has to run in the Super Bowl. <laughs> I'm running the hell out of him. And honestly, now 
that zone read from last week makes a lot of sense after seeing the burst that he has. Like, I'm not, I don't want to say speed. I don't want to call him fast, but you can't ignore the plays that he made with his legs in this game. Purdy actually generated uh, over 10 points of EPA in this game. Like, he added 10 points to the scoreboard whenever he used his legs, whether it's scrambling, whether it's like this play, picking up the first down, whether it's buying time in the pocket and throwing the ball downfield to Kyle Juszczyk on a couple of occasions. 10 points of EPA. Like, that hasn't happened for the 49ers. It was a long time since the 49ers have had a quarterback who made plays like Brock Purdy did, especially in these kind of moments. So I think that was probably the biggest takeaway from the game. We're gonna, I'm going to dissect this game all week, you know, break down the running game, the ins and outs of everything that happened. But you have to start with what Purdy was able to do. And it started with his legs. So game manager, no more. I, I just don't think that well, it was never a thing. But it's definitely not a thing after the NFC Championship game. So thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, comment on if there are any ideas that you want me to get to. We're going to have to talk about the offensive line because that was a worry. That will be a worry against the Chiefs. Uh, we'll see if they have Charles Aminihu or not. But, um, yeah, good to the defensive side of the ball, too, this week. So uh, thanks, as always, for watching.